Hello friends, today topic for the discussion is PCR lab setup with estimated budget. Here we begin. PCR invented by Kerry Mullis is a landmark technique that has revolutionized almost all aspect of molecular biology or we can say PCR combines with advances in bioinformatics has revolutionized the field of genetics. It is a technique which is capable of detecting even a single copy of target gene. As a result, PCR is now widely accepted in the field of diagnosis and research. In today's world, PCR setup has become important aspect for variety of reason such as diagnosis of disease, research, personalized medicine and list goes on and on. So in this video, I am trying to sensitize all of you about basic planning of PCR lab setup. And at the end, I will show you the overall list of required materials and estimated budget for the establishment of molecular lab. The objectives for this session are, after watching this video, the audience should have general idea about PCR lab layout and the decontamination process of this particular lab and also to have idea about quality control process. Let's begin with laboratory design. Since PCR technique is potentially capable of detecting a single copy of gene, extreme care must be taken during lab design so that assay doesn't give misleading results and prevent from contamination. For this, at least four separate rooms are preferable to create a successful workflow for PCR. But sometime according to circumstances, we can adjust the actual process in three room also. In this screen, you can see the general layout of PCR lab. Here rooms are divided as pre-PCR and post-PCR area. For pre-PCR area, which is also known as clean area, first three rooms are allocated. And for post-PCR area, which is known as dotty area, one room is allocated. We can see here, each room is assigned for particular function of the process. Room one is for specimen storage and nucleic acid extraction. For this, biosafety cabinet is kept there. Room 2 is for reagent and master mix preparation, which is done inside PCR cabinet. And room 3 is for template addition. Here, extracted nucleic acid is added to master mix. Finally, room 4, where PCR machine or thermocycler is placed. And this is the room for amplification of DNA and further processing. At the bottom, you can see there is written unidirectional workflow. That means work process should flow from room 1 to room 4 and backtracking will not be good for the process. Let's discuss it little bit more. Unidirectional workflow means the person and specimen should flow in same direction. That is from pre-PCR area to post-PCR. So, Ideally, if possible, staff should not go back from dotty area to clean area on the same day. Now, let's talk about each of these room in detail. Room 1. The task for room 1 are specimen processing and storage and nucleic acid extraction. The extraction can be manual, semi-automated or automated. And these are the specimen which can be processed for PCR. And these are the list of equipments which should be placed in room 1. 
minus 80 degree fridge is required for sample storage, laboratory refrigerator for storage of reagents, biosafety cabinet level 2 is required for the processing and extraction of sample as we know that all specimens are infectious. Along with that, centrifuge, pipette, vortex and consumables should be available in this room. And in this room, there should be negative pressure. Coming to the room 2, room 2 is for reagent and master mix preparation. For master mix preparation, the required components are nucleus free water, buffer, deoxynucleotides, magnesium chloride, primer, DNA polymerase, reverse transcriptase for RT-PCR and detection probe for real time PCR. And here is the list of equipments for room 2, minus 20 degree fridge, dedicated pipettes, vortex mixer, centrifuge and PCR cabinet as a working site. In this room, there should be positive pressure. Now let us talk about PCR cabinet. It is also known as PCR hood or work station or laminar airflow. The PCR cabinet is designed to prevent cross contamination between samples and reagents. It eliminates DNA or gene residue that may remain from previous tests and prepare work space for next experiments. This is the picture of PCR cabinet. Here we can see it is closed from three sides and open side provide a space for performing a given task. It has a UV light system for sterilization process. Now moving to our room 3, which is designated as template addition room. In this room, we can add up extracted nucleic acid to master mix and the process is known as template addition. This should be done in sterile cabinet with UV facility or we can say inside laminar airflow or PCR hood. In this room, there should be negative pressure. Finally, room 4 or we can say post PCR room. This room is for actual amplification of DNA by the help of PCR machine and after amplification of DNA, it can be detected and subjected to further analysis. In this room, we need thermocycler for multiplication of DNA and for further analysis, we may need sequencing platform, electrophoresis system and other dedicated facility for post PCR. And in this room, there should be negative pressure. There are some popular types of PCR we can have according to our objective. Conventional PCR in which products are analyzed through gel electrophoresis. Real-time PCR, which provides real-time detection of products during the exponential phase. River transcriptase PCR, here RNA products are first converted to complementary DNA, which then amplified by PCR. Multiplex PCR is for amplification of multiple target in single PCR run. And these are the image of PCR machine, which we can, we can purchase from market. You can choose the machine from different multinational companies according to your convenience and budget. Okay. Beside this, there are things to be taken into consideration during lab design. It is always better to have separate rooms also for sample collection region storage, room for donning and doffing of PPEs and sterilization room. All right. Another important part is contamination. That means unwanted nucleic acid may add up in the process. PCR test is highly sensitive method. So it is more prone to contamination. When multiple samples are handled, 
sequentially. Materials can be easily exchanged unknowingly from one tube to another, from pipettes, from globes, from bench tops, and also on dust particles carried from one lab to another. Some of the possible sources of contamination are cross contamination may happen between samples, contamination may occur from laboratory equipments, sometime there may be carryover contamination and one of the major culprit for contamination is aerosols. Aerosolized products can contaminate whole lab. So, to prevent from this havoc, decontamination process is really important. For decontamination, following things should be taken into consideration. Number 1, bleach. For bleaching process, 10 percent sodium hypochlorite can be used for surface and instrument, followed by removal of bleach with ethanol and water. Sometime alternatively, Commercial products that are validated as DNA destroying agent can also be used if sodium hypochlorite is not suitable. Number 2, UV radiation can be applied. UV rays inactivate the DNA or RNA of pathogens. And number 3, enzymatic method for which uracil DNA glycosylase is in use. It reduces DNA carryover contamination between PCR experiments by preventing amplification of DNA from previous reaction. Now, another very important aspect to be considered during lab setup is quality control. In a PCR lab, the quality control is mainly concerned with control of errors in the performance of tests and verification of test results. For this, internal and external quality control should be kept in consideration. Okay. For this, following controls can be used for the assurance of result. Positive control. Positive control is to verify that method is capable of recovering and amplifying the target. Negative control. Negative control is to check contamination of PCR experiment with foreign DNA. Another one is blank or no template control. It indicates if PCR reagents are contaminated or not. And finally, internal control which monitors nucleic acid extraction procedure. Okay. Now, at last there are some points to remember time and again during setup of molecular lab. First thing, layout of lab. That means, there should be adequate physical segregation. Secondly, there should be adequate supply of reagents and equipments for particular section. Thirdly, room should be designed in such a way, there should be unidirectional workflow inside the lab. Furthermore, decontamination provision should be developed as it can become major challenge later. Finally, quality control. Quality control is to ensure both the reliability and accuracy of test results. In addition to that, QC process developed in lab is crucial for the process of certification and accreditation. And these are the required materials for the setup of molecular lab with budget. These are the equipments. Again equipments, these are the consumables, and this is the final approximate budget. This can vary according to quality and quantity of your instruments and test volume. Thank you very much and good luck.